Hello, good afternoon everybody. I am going live with Dr. Mark Sklar uh, today and he is a natural fertility expert um, and we're going to be talking on behalf of Mark and Fairhaven Health all about egg quality and ways to improve it but also balancing hormones which can be of course be instrumental to conception and I know many of our readers have loads of questions around that. They've just written a fantastic um, article all around this, so please head to our link in bio to read more about balancing hormones and improving egg health and quality. Um, but I'm now going to join with Mark now to what you guys can be doing to optimise this from home. Have your questions ready? Hi everyone who's joining, lovely to see you. Hello Mark, Hi there. how are you? Good, good. So nice to see you. How are you today? Yes, very well, thank you. All good. And uh, we've got lots of people joining who uh, would love to hear more about you. Um, of course, we're going to be talking about Fairhaven, um, egg quality, improving it, doing what you can from home and balancing hormones. So please introduce yourself for those who don't know you. Yeah. So first and foremost, thanks so much for having me and for um, allowing me to talk about uh, all things fertility and Fairhaven Health and so forth. So thanks so much for that. Um, I'm uh, Dr. Mark Sklard, a natural fertility expert, and I've been working with couples for over 19 years to support them to first and foremost find the real reason why they're not able to conceive and then come up with, um, hopefully come up with, uh, unique and individualized plans for each individual and couple based on their specific needs and goals. And so I think that's one of the things that I've observed over the years is that that's one of the biggest uh, missing pieces, the biggest gaps um, in reproductive health is, is this unique approach, this customization to couples and individuals based on their needs and not just, you know, anything that's mentioned everywhere. Mm -hmm, absolutely. And there's so much that people can be doing at home to optimize their health, their egg quality, sperm quality isn't there in preparation for natural conception, but also to assist with reproductive conception too. Yeah. You know, I think all too often what happens in the fertility journey is that whether it happens in one specific moment or over time, we end up giving up, uh, un unbeknownst to ourselves, end up giving up a lot of our control in the process and engagement in the process over to the white coat on the other side of the table. Mm -hmm. um, and I think there's a place for that, certainly. You know, there, there's a time when we're in the middle of an IVF cycle and, you know, we have to trust the process, trust the doctor and clinic we've chosen that they have our best interests at heart and that we're gonna follow their process, right? You know, to get us to that end goal. But there's so much that we can do on our own and there's so much that we have control over. Um, and the reality is I think almost every doctor out there in the world will say that if you don't start with yourself taking control and managing your own health and your own reproductive function on your side of things, then, it's going to be an uphill battle. And, yeah. and so I, I do think that there's a lot that we have control over and should have control over. Um, and I really, I, I think one of the biggest things here for couples is to, for them to feel empowered that they can make a lot of change. I can't, for all those people listening, you know, I, I can't express how often we get emails, uh, messages, uh, posts on whatever social media platform, just saying, thanks so much for that video or that information or that podcast, you know, or this live right here, because that motivated me to take control of what I could do. And I made these changes and I, I got pregnant and had my little baby. Right. And, and those stories are repeated over and over and over again. But if they didn't take that first step to take ownership of what they could control and then say, and then to, to find help and assistance where they felt like they needed it, right? I, I, you know, nothing would have happened for them. And so it's so important that we recognize that there's so much that we can do on our own. It doesn't mean that we don't need guidance and support and coaching or whatever we, whatever we each need. Um, but it means that we have a lot of that power. And one of the things I often tell uh, couples when I'm speaking to them is, 
I'm going to write up your plan for you, but I can't do it for you, right? You know, the, the hard part is what you have to do and follow through. And it's not about being perfect. And, and it's not, uh, you know, about perfection in this whole process every day, because that could be stressful. It's just about progress and just doing better with each passing day and recognizing that I might not have perfect days and I might slip up from time to time, but that doesn't mean that I allow that to snowball. It means that I take a step back and recognize that I'm human and there's only so much we can do. And now that I'm going to make the next day a little bit better. Um, and, and with that, I think we all have to recognize that there is so much in our control, like diet and exercise and sleep and stress management and lifestyle and, and so forth. And all of these things are hugely impactful into our health and our endocrine system and reproductive function. And even though we all might hear these things on and on, and I might talk about them over and over and over again, it doesn't mean that we should tune them out because we've heard it so many times. It means that they're repeated over and over because of the value and importance that they have and what we should. And, and so that means we should be taking that more to heart and not just kind of blocking it out. Absolutely. The first thing I want to ask you about to do with egg quality. is so, so we know that um, women are born with a certain number of eggs and of course they decrease over time. But what about egg quality? How can women improve egg quality? And why is it important for conception? Well, I, I wanna mention two things here. First and foremost, not every fertility condition is an egg quality issue. Mm -hmm. So I, that's first and foremost for everybody out there because all too often I see everybody coming in and everything they're doing and taking is to support egg quality. And so my first question is, is how do you know that's what you need? So that's first and foremost. But let's take the assumption that that is what needs to be done and egg quality is something that needs to be addressed. Um, then I, I think all those first things that I mentioned um, just a moment ago are essential foundational things that need to happen. We need to make sure that we are getting a fair amount and good quality sleep. This one is often overlooked um, and it's, it could potentially be one of the more important pieces of the whole puzzle. Your body needs time to rest, recover, recuperate. This is the time where healing happens. This is the time where your adrenals reset. And if you're not wake, if you're not getting enough sleep and if you're not waking up feeling rested and energized, that needs to be improved. That's your signal that that needs to be improved. Second, diet. It's the, you know, there, there's not many things that we do as, as much as eat, right? Yeah. So just imagine the impact that it has both positively and negatively. And I hear all the time, well, <clears throat> it's so difficult to make these changes. Well, we just need to start with every meal. Can we make better choices? And habits are created and formed in roughly 21 days, maybe a little bit more for some. And so if we're, if we're thinking that we're going to change our diet and in a week everything's gonna be, this is gonna be easy, that's not the case. It takes time and you might not feel comfortable with a lot of those changes for maybe a couple of months. But the reality is, is it takes persistence over time and that is one of the most important things that we need to do. We all know when we're eating bad. We do, yeah. Right, right. I mean, because we, we're consciously making those decisions, and right? We like we can for make it afterwards. Right, right, and we feel guilty for that. So if you're feeling guilty, that means you made the wrong choices before. Now, I, I, I don't mean that to say that we have to be perfect, and but, and I certainly don't want us to feel stressed and guilty after we've eaten something that doesn't is not appropriate for us. But I want you to be making that decision as a conscious decision, and I want that to be you know, not the norm in your diet, right? So 80% of the time, roughly, you're eating the way you should be. And then you have that 20% of the time where you give yourself a little bit of flexibility. And that should be something that you enjoy and not beat yourself up about when you do do it, right? And so diet is really important and valuable here. Um, and I don't have to go through a long list. You all know. And there's also some uh, uniqueness for each one of us. What might be okay for one person might make us not feel well, 
but we know that because we don't feel well after we eat it. And so that should be a trigger and a reminder that we should avoid those things. But diet is essential. Quality of the food that you eat is so important. So if you can't always eat the right thing, the quality of that food, that it's fresh, um, hopefully organic, these things are really, really valuable. And there was a, a study where they took a, a family. I, I can't really call it a, a research study because it only it was one family. <laughs> but they took four individuals and they, they didn't eat a, a, an organic diet before and they ate a regular diet. And they tested their labs before and their toxin levels before. Then they had them for only two weeks. All they ate was good quality organic food. Those levels in two weeks were night and day. They changed dramatically. Wow. So even in such a short period of time, there's so much we can do. So it's really about making the best choices. And we don't always have, you know, we're on the go and things are happening. But I always feel like we can always make a better choice yeah. in almost every situation. Yeah. But additionally yeah. to the foods that we're choosing, what we're avoiding, what we're drinking, what we're not drinking, et cetera, exercise, there is so much, isn't there, that we can't necessarily get the right amounts of from food alone. And that's, of course, where supplementation comes in. And that's, I know, something that you're an advocate for. So I'd love to know a little bit more about when a woman should begin to try and improve egg quality and how supplementation can support that. And also Fairhaven Health. Um, I've linked up in the bio because they're offering our readers 15% off, which is fabulous. Um, so if you mm -hmm. use code FHH15, you can benefit from that. And they have a particular formula, don't they, for women, FH Pro for women. Yeah. So I'd love to hear about all of those things, if you don't mind. Yeah, so I'm going to start with, the. I think, what was the first question, which is when should someone start yeah, to begin when, to, yeah, exactly. when and why should to address, you know, this? address that? Yeah. And how do supplements support that? So, you know, I think just like anything, you wouldn't just show up, you know, yesterday here in San Diego, they had the rock and roll marathon and no one just showed up to the, to the starting line and said, this sounds like a good idea. I'm going to run a race, right. Okay. And run a marathon. Yeah. They wouldn't make it very far. And I think this is the same thing with fertility, okay. although we end up realizing that a little too late often. And so I want you to think about your reproductive journey and your fertility as a marathon, not a sprint. And so it means we need time to make impact on our overall health and hormones. So the first thing is the sooner we start, the better, period. The second part of that is that if we know that you have a reproductive issue, if your hormones have been off for some reason, if your cycles have been off, if you've been on birth control for quite some bit of time, if you know that you have an issue, then let's, let's address those things now before it's time to get pregnant so you could be ahead of the game. Mm -hmm. um, and part of that comes down to filling in those missing pieces, those gaps in the nutrients that we each need and providing our body with the key nutrients that it needs to support overall hormone balance and um, egg quality. And so that's why one of my favorite products is FH Pro for women, you know, by Fairhaven Health right here. Yep. I mean, it's jam packed. What are, with the, what are all the ingredients the... that are going to help support that egg quality? Yeah, so I've got to take off my glasses to read it here. But the egg quality piece, <laughs> the egg quality piece is that they have it here is uh, ionisetol, yep. CoQ10, grapeseed extract, resveratrol. NAC and melatonin. Those are some of the key ones specifically for egg quality. But the other beautiful thing about this is this is your full multivitamin and prenatal all in one. You don't need to take anything else. So this not only saves you money, but it saves you a hassle in figuring out what do I need to take today versus yesterday? How many pills? Am all the bottles. The and yeah. Right. This takes care of it for you. It has, And not only that, but they don't hide any of their dosages okay. for any of their ingredients. So often we see a proprietary blend and, it's, and you can't see what each nutrient level is that you're getting. This, it's clear, you know exactly what you're getting. Um, and that's why years and years ago, 
I switched over to that as one of my primary recommendations for, for women. And how many capsules would you take a day? So th this, uh, for the full dosage, it's six capsules a day. Um, you can take those all at one time. And if okay. you're going to do that, I typically recommend doing that at night with dinner. Yeah. But I, tip, but I typically recommend, um, and I do recommend taking it with food, but I, I often just to help split it up because it's, it's typically not the only thing some women are taking. So I typically say split it up and you do three and three, more breakfast and dinner. Okay, that's good to know. And if anyone has got any questions about natural things you can be doing from home to increase the chances of conception and also supplementation, he is your man. So please do ask away whilst we're chatting. Um, and for anyone who's just joined, um, you can benefit in the USA, you can benefit from 15% off Fairhaven Health supplements, their range, code FHH15. Um, go there and have a look. The link is in the bio. Um, and um, further afield than that as well. So please go check it out wherever you're tuning in from. Um, we also, I wanted to ask you about something called free radicals. So what are they and how can they harm egg quality and sperm? Yeah, so they damage our cells. But and what they, are they? they? Free radicals, they're all the the toxins okay. in, in the world, imagine. Okay, all the things that we come in contact with that are no good for us, just to keep it in simple terms, okay? If you, um, it, it, let's just say in, in the US, there's a lot of chemicals sprayed on lawns, okay? So those will um, cause more free radicals and damage our cells. If you are eating food that we were talking about, quality of food. If you're eating food that's not of good quality, that will do it. If you're eating a lot of fried foods and sodas and processed sugar and so forth, all of that will do it. Okay. And so um, the, the free radicals damage our cells. And one of the main things that they actually impact is the mitochondrial function of the, of the cell. And that is when you start looking at research for improving egg quality, so much of that is geared towards improving mitochondrial function and, and cellular function. And so that's where that, that will make a big difference. That's also um, one of the reasons why we need antioxidants in our diet and why we need antioxidants in our uh, vitamins. And so some of those nutrients that I mentioned when I was talking about FH Pro are those things. So the resveratrol and the grape seed extract, uh, CoQ10. Yeah. Um, and, and melatonin, actually, many people don't realize melatonin is an antioxidant as well and helps with egg quality. So these are all the reasons why that those items are in the formulation of FH Pro is so that they can mitigate the free radicals and keep the cellular structure strong and improve mitochondrial function. Brilliant. Um, just to interrupt you there, I'm sorry. Um, someone sure. just asked a question. Can you please give me the name of the multivitamin? If you could just hold it up, please. Um, it's FH Pro for women um, by Fairhaven Health. And our readers can benefit from 15% off. If you head to um, our Fertility Help Hub link in bio on Instagram, uh, the code is FHH15 and you can shop the range with 15% off. So yeah, sorry. And there was also one other question. Would you mind if I just asked you whilst I have? No, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Someone has asked about what they should take for low AMH. <laughs> I know so, you probably get that question a fair bit. I do. So when I start, I don't know if they joined in the beginning or now, but one of my, one of the most important things that I recommend to everybody is that you are taking the vitamins and supplements that you need and your plan is customized to you. Low AMH, in my opinion, personally, is not a diagnosis okay. Okay, that, we can, that we can guide our decision-making on when it comes to supplementation. We need to look at the entire picture that, so that we understand the full picture and really the reasons why. Like um, low AMH in and of itself doesn't tell me you know, it might be appropriate if you are older, let's just say 43, your AMH should be lower. That's a normal progression over time, yep. right? Yep. So that approach would be different than if a 35-year-old said, my AMH is 0.3. Mm -hmm. And so um, 
so that's why it's a little bit difficult to say exactly. I, I can't customize anything for you. But what I would say is this is definitely the place where I would start. Okay. Because this fills in those missing pieces. And as much as this is addressing egg quality primarily, there is no one thing that says, oh, this is going to, this is a whole different conversation in terms of AMH because AMH is the main dictator for ovarian reserve. And so if we are functioning under the premise that our ovaries have all the eggs that we um, that they need when they're born, when that we're born with, then that number should never go up, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So, and I see it go up all the time. Um, and I think that it is possible, but um, but that's a whole different conversation. What I would say is I don't trust the AMH that much okay. in okay. my decision making. Yeah, in my decision making um, uh, moving forward. So I'm glad. Uh, well, yeah. it's really good to hear because you know the, there can be experts who lean heavily on that, and so it's always good to hear a different yeah. approach. And also, you know, people who are proactive out there wanting to uh, support their health. Um, you know, having conversations with people like you is just very inspiring and a great place to start. Um, there have been a couple more questions, if you don't mind, and then I would love to ask sure. you if we can go back to it. Uh, you mentioned um, the free radicals um, and the toxins, basically. So how does high quality prenatal or preconception multivitamin, such as FH Pro by Fairhaven Health, how does that help with toxins? Yeah, so the product itself is not going to get rid of any toxins or um, or manage how your body receives those toxins. It's going to help fight in terms of balancing out, and those antioxidants are going to go in and try to kill those free radicals and protect the cells. So that's primarily how it's going to work. Okay. It's not exactly fighting toxins. That's one of the things that we have to do actually on our own you know, in our environment is start to get rid of those toxins around us as much as we can. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you. And someone, Flick has asked, what do you think of DHEA with IVF? Well, I think DHEA may be helpful, but I do think that it is used a little bit too carefree, okay. in my opinion. So many uh, doctors are just saying, here, you should just take DHEA without any concern. And so many women read all over the place that you should be on it, that they are doing the same thing. And I'm a, I am a big proponent of testing and not guessing. And so first rule for me with DHEA, because it is a hormone and we don't think of it in that way, because all we hear is, oh, if you egg quality, take DHEA. Yeah. Well, DHEA is a hormone and it can have negative impacts. And I have seen it over and over again throw off hormones, throw off cycles. I've seen amenorrhea caused by it. And so it does need to be managed. That's first and foremost. And I do believe that we need to be all in the right dosage. Mm -hmm. And so depending on where your levels are, which is why I think it's important to test first, would depend on if you need it and how much you should be taking. Okay, that's sound advice. Thank you. Um, Leslie has asked, is FH, is FH Pro sufficient as a prenatal? Hundred percent. Yeah, it has all your. So the main things that create a prenatal is primarily folic acid, or in my opinion, folate. This has the folate in it in a great dosage. It's methylated, um, and so that's really the other. That's really the mo the most important thing. The other thing that makes up a prenatal, and I was just checking because the printing is so small, I had to make sure it was there. The other thing that's in it that really makes up a prenatal is choline. And that's in there in a nice amount as well. So um, it is uh, your all-in-one prenatal slash uh, um, egg quality support. And people often ask us this question. I'm sure they ask this to you as well. But what, what's your advice around um, going for a more premium supplement, such as Fairhaven well, Health yeah. Range? Uh, absolutely. You know, this is the same thing about quality, yeah. right? Um, I mean, cost doesn't necessarily always dictate if it's good quality or bad quality, but you want to use brands that do the research, that have evaluated the, the research to create and formulate their product, and then also sought out the best quality of vitamins, to inc uh, of nutrients to create their vitamin with. And that's exactly what Fairhaven has done. But this is why I always say, 
and, and it's hard to use this analogy now because I don't know what the low end car is, but I compare it to cars, okay. right? Like, do you need the Ferrari or Porsche? Probably not. But do you want whatever that lowest, least expensive car you can think of is? I always think of a car from the from the 80s called the Yugo. Um, <laughs> um, do you need that? No, you shouldn't be doing that. When anyone tells me they go to the drugstore and they just get their branded vitamins, their prenatal for $5 off the shelf, I'm like, you might as well just save that $5 not and put it in your idea. pocket and get something else and not waste your money there because the quality is not there. You can't put, first and foremost, you can't put all the nutrients you need into one pill so the all-in-ones don't really work. And, uh, and two, a good quality vitamin shouldn't cost you $5. They're just trying to make money. So you really are looking for like the Toyota or the Honda, right? Like something right in the middle, maybe if you can afford it, maybe on the higher end. Yep. And that's really how you should look at uh, your supplements and, and vitamins and the quality. What do you want to invest in that? And how do you want that to support you? Okay, that's a very good analogy. Um, and for anyone who's just joined yeah. and would like 15% off, please take advantage. I've popped it in the comments so fhh 15 15 percent off go to our link in bio and you can benefit from that um fair haven health have written an article for us very recently which people should read head to fertilityhelphub.com all about improving your hormonal balance and how that can affect fertility covering everything that we've sort of talked about now and more um why is it important for women to balance their hormones when they're trying to conceive and how can you do it? <laughs> well, you know, when anytime we're talking about fertility and hormones, we're talking about the endocrine system and our hormones are at the, the center of our endocrine system. And if our hormones are not balanced properly, we need, we are, we need to be a fine tuned machine and everything that has to be calibrated a certain way. Now, it doesn't have to be exactly at a specific number, not usually, but that's why we have ranges. But it's because of that that we need to take care of ourselves, right? One of the only ways, other than if our body's screaming at us because we're in pain or we're extreme fatigue or whatever it is, one of the only ways we can understand what's going on is evaluating our health through blood work. Mm -hmm. And this is the same with our hormones. And if our hormones are not balanced properly, especially at certain times of our cycle for different hormones, then we're not going to get the results that we're looking for. It's not, um, you know, conception for humans, we're not as efficient as other animals and species. Um, they, can, they can reproduce, you know, for all intents and purposes, multiple babies very quickly. We don't have that luxury and we're relatively inefficient at doing that. So we need to make sure everything's working on our side. And that's where regulating and balancing our hormones comes in. You know, our hormones fluctuate through the entire cycle. I say our, but a woman's hormones fluctuate through an entire cycle. And so we need more of certain hormones at different times. And based on that, that's where this adjustment is. And so if it's not, if your body's not able to do that on its own, then it needs the support to do that. And that's where that comes in. And so the FH Pro does some of that, depending on what it is that we're trying to um, support. And a lot of people ask that question of around for PCOS as well. Um, is this is FH Pro for women a good idea to take if you're suffering from things like PCOS? It's actually my number one go to for PCOS specifically because of two key in, uh, nutrients. So in the past. Um, or, or just previously when I was talking about the nutrients, I mentioned ionisetol, where there's actually two forms. There's myo and d -chiro. And specifically for PCOS, you want both of those in a certain ratio. And that's exactly what FH Pro has already okay. mixed in. So it gives you that foundational um, uh, nutrients to help regulate. Now you might need a little bit more than that, depending on what the circumstances are um, for PCOS, because there's several different types or variations of PCOS. And FH Pro doesn't handle everything that we might see, but it is a good foundational um, you know, 
multivitamin, for lack of a, a better word, or prenatal to start with, and then you can build on top of it. <clears throat> Brilliant. Thank you so much for explaining and for answering so many questions today. It's been wonderful. Um, if you have any further questions, please feel free to DM and we can um, ask Dr. Sklar or we can ask Fairhaven Health. Um, and also, yeah, benefit, you can benefit from 15% with that code FHH15. Our link is in our bio. And you can go to our website and read more about balancing hormones. Um, the article is in fact called um, Simple Ways to Balance Hormones and Improve Egg Quality. So go to Fertility Help Hub, read that. It's superb, very, very educational. And yeah, all about um, empowering people to do what they can from home, wherever they are, to um, get prepared for natural or reproductive assistance. Excellent. Yeah, that article is an excellent article. Please check it out. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you so much for your time today. And thank you, everyone, for joining. Thanks for having me. Bye, everyone. Bye, Have everyone. a great day. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.